We want to solve cosine x equals negative one-half for all solutions. Give degree answers. Use k to represent any integer. We will solve this equation using both reference triangles and the unit circle. First, notice how the cosine function value is negative, and cosine is negative where x is negative, which means cosine is negative when the angle terminates in the second quadrant as well as the third quadrant. For the next step, we ignore the negative sign for a moment and determine the reference angle that gives a cosine function value of one-half. If we sketch these reference angles in the second and third quadrants, the cosine function value will be negative. Having a cosine function value of one-half should remind us of a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle shown here, where cosine theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Notice cosine 60 degrees is equal to one divided by two or one-half. The next step is to sketch a reference angle of 60 degrees in the second quadrant, as well as the third quadrant. And let's also sketch the reference triangles. Notice for both reference triangles, the adjacent side is negative one, and the hypotenuse is two. In the second quadrant, the opposite side is square root three. In the third quadrant, the opposite side is negative square root three. Now from here, any angle that's coterminal to either of these two angles will give a cosine function value of negative one-half. Notice how using both reference triangles, the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse is negative one-half. Let's first find the least positive angle that terminates here in the second quadrant, which would be this angle here. This angle is equal to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees, or 120 degrees. So let's start with x equals 120. And then, any angle coterminal to this angle also gives a cosine function value of negative one-half. To find all the coterminal angles to this angle, we add or subtract multiples of 360 degrees, which gives us plus 360k, where 360k represents all the multiples of 360 degrees. And of course, the units on this expression would be degrees. And now let's focus on the least positive angle that terminates in the third quadrant, which would be this angle here. This angle is equal to 180 degrees plus 60 degrees, or 240 degrees. So let's begin with x equals 240. And then to find all the coterminal angles to this angle, we add multiples of 360 degrees, which gives us plus 360k. And once again, the units would be degrees. So these two expressions for x represent all the solutions to the given equation. Let's verify this using the unit circle and also look at this graphically. On the unit circle, x is equal to cosine theta, and we know x is negative in the second and third quadrants. To determine where cosine x is equal to negative one-half, we look for an x-coordinate of one-half in the second and third quadrants, which we can see here at 120 degrees, and here at 240 degrees, which means all the solutions, once again, are x equals 120 plus 360 times k degrees as well as x equals 240 plus 360k degrees. And finally, let's also verify this graphically. Here I've graphed y equals cosine x and y equals negative one-half. The points of intersection represent the solutions to the equation. Notice how there's an infinite number of intersections, which is why there are an infinite number of solutions. The first angle we found in the second quadrant is represented by this point here where x equals 120 degrees. And if we add multiples of 360 degrees, the next angle would be 480 degrees, followed by 840 degrees, and so on. And of course, we could also move in the negative direction by subtracting multiples of 360 degrees. And then in the third quadrant, the first angle we found was this angle here, 240 degrees. And if we add 360 degrees, the next solution would be 600 degrees, and so on. So this graph does verify our solutions are correct. I hope you found this helpful.